Well, happy painting, everybody. Friday uh, at noon, we're going to take off and do a do a painting. I apologize about last week. We thought we were able to. We thought we'd be able to do a plain air up in uh, uh, near Mount Lassen, but because my sister happens to have a home up there, we thought we'd be able to get good internet, and we couldn't. So it is actually recorded, and we will be up soon. They'll probably put it up in the middle of the week. Um, so back in the studio today, and we're going to paint, do a little painting, a um, little 18 or 18 by 24, uh, coated with a thin coat of gesso and a little bit of a, I think I put a little bit of yellow and brown into it, um, maybe a little blue, but it's primarily gesso. This happens to be a, a villa up on Lake Garda in Italy. Got inspired because we had our uh, a Zoom meeting with our Italy workshop crew last night that were coming. And um, so I thought, man, I'm going to do something in Italy. So this is going to be a villa, the lake, the backside of the Dolomites on the other side that are very faded back. So it, it's done some of my work for me. There are problems still. We want to get rid of this. It's really in the way when it raised this up, we want to get rid of the heads. Probably want to get rid of this or move it over. Pro we'll put the boat in. All right. I may put this in, I don't know. But for right now, let's get moving on it, okay? So I've got one of these uh, Tromboy pens, these water-soluble pens, and we're gonna start with kind of where this vertical, I'm gonna move it a little to the right. So we're gonna start with it, oh, about right here, all right? And I wanna move the bottom up. So I wanna leave about that much room for the water. So we're gonna get this probably about in here. Okay, that's going to go all the way back. And up here, if this wall is going to be, say, here, because I just moved it, I like the way I did that. Now, just so you guys know, if you just take a little water, you're going to erase it. You, can, you have a cool way of erasing your pen marks. So this line is going to go up here. We're going to get this in very quickly. Just approximately get an approximate line drawing down so that we have something to work off of. And then we have the angle change right about here, and that comes up. And again, you know, as I've said on many occasions, I'm just plowing straight ahead, knowing that I may do some changes because I may not have it quite the way I want it. Now, this wall has a little bit of an uphill slope. So we'll just kind of indicate it a little bit uphill like that. Slope, all right. So we want to get these pillars in front. Where are these? these they're about here. One, the taller, I like the tall one and a shorter one. And they're gonna come down into the water. There is a pier at about this point and here. And so this one is gonna sit about here in the water. And there's gonna be one here and one here, okay? So that's what we know. There's another one back here. I do wanna get that in, bringing it out a little bit. This wall is gonna come here and then go up and this is going to be the top of this, unless I want to make it a little taller. Uh, it's going to be about the same level as this. So that's about all we need. Going to get rid of this, going to get rid of that. Okay. Uh, if I did want to put this in, I would bring it out here maybe. But I don't think I want to. I think I, I want an entry point into the, uh, into the painting. So, so let's keep going real, very quickly. Let's get this little wall in right here. And it's kind of up in here. And I'm just guessing. This feels like it's, it should be about here. The, this wall is about there, it's about that high. But from here, it goes back, up, up. Everything lanes, you notice it's cool. One of the great things about some of this, in some of the European cities is there's so much age and history um, that a lot of it just kind of defies what normal would be, what we would think of as normal. So as we're gonna come up- As far as perspective, John? Huh? As far as perspective? Yeah. So these are leaning. So we wanna make sure, either I straighten them out or I make sure they're obvious that they're leaning. And I've chosen to make them obvious that they're leaning. And we'll just kind of scribble around a little top notch up here. Wall's gonna come back about here, about here. Villa is going to start about here, but I'm going to move it to about here. I'm going to move it a little bit here. 
maybe a little bit about here. How's that? Roof line, eh, a little higher than this. So our roof line's about here, back, up, over, chimney, closer to the top because we've changed everything. Great little piece up in here. Window lines up right about here. That's, and here, this is going to come over further. I'm, I'm making changes as I draw. And then we've got this orchard. It's, I want it to overlap that window a little bit, I think. Comes out, comes up over here, down, up, over the wall a little bit, down. Line of the lake, about here. Now again, a lot of this may change as I get into the painting because I may get into the shapes. That's all I'm going to do, just so you know. That's all I'm going to do for right now. Mainly because I want to have enough time to get into shapes will tell me more than lines. Ooh, remember that shapes will tell you more than lines will. All right. Um, let's get kind of this tone. It's it's a blue, a drab blue. So I actually have a light blue on my palette, which I've laid out many times, and with the with a white. But I want to kill it. So I'm going to kill it with say a little bit of a burnt sienna. I don't want it to be really, really blue. I want, I want a blue characteristic. That's, that's kind of okay. <laughs> and I just threw too much um, burnt sienna into it. I don't want too much. I just want kind of a grayed blue, something like that. We got to start with something anyway. So let's get that going with my little gesso brush. A little bit of turp into it so it flows. You see how beautifully it just covers over these lines. The lines are there as guidelines. They're not there as absolute perfection. And with that, what the point I'm trying to make is use them, but don't neatly try to paint up to them. If you do, you're going to be sorry. Because chances are your drawing's a little off like mine is. You know, if you want to spend, I don't know, an hour in your drawing, I suppose you could get a drawing that is pretty darn accurate. Uh, but if you're painting in a, in a plain air type of a time frame where you're, the light has a lot to do with the, the way you're painting, then really you're gonna, you don't want to spend too long on the linear work because the shapes are going to tell you more. They're going to tell you in terms of design. They're going to tell you in terms of value. And they just are really, I mean, often on certain types of painting, sometimes I don't draw uh, any line. I just paint with shapes. Because that's how we see, you know, we don't see lines. Lines are something that, and you know, I, I, it'd be very interesting to find out the origin, but I think it goes back to cave paintings. Uh, lines are graphic depictions of edges. Comes down, it actually gets a little bit warm. I'm actually going to throw a little bit of the, uh, I have um, a little bit of my um, asphalt in there. Kind of throw that back into the blue. Let it get a little darker, a little bit more that color direction. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Uh, probably could have a little bit more, a little bit darker, maybe a little ultramarine into it. Let's try it again. That's a little too, that's a little too brown, but. So I see a lot of ultramarine into that. And I'm just kind of pushing color into color until I get something that I think is appropriate. Um, Gail wants to know, do you prefer to start at the top of the painting and work down? Well, I, I've been asked that before. Um, generally, yes, and I'll tell you why. It, I'm not painting from the top down. I'm painting from the back forward. I'm thinking of what I'm painting as dimensional. So I'm painting from there to here, meaning that I will keep everything back here in a more minimal value contrast. So the value contrast and color intensity will not be as strong back here as it will as I come forward. So it's not that I'm painting from top to bottom, although I guess in, if you're looking at, in terms of reality, I am, 
but in terms of what I'm actually painting subjectively, what I'm painting is from the background to the foreground. So I hope that answers that question. I think it does, but I don't know that it does. So let's a little bit more, and that's about all I'm gonna do right now. I, I will indicate other stuff back in there at another time, but I wanna keep moving and get the totality of the imagery up here, all right? So next thing we have is we have real pale water. We have some lights, we have some striations, and I've kind of indicated some of them, and you know I'll, I'll paint over them, but let's get that water in. Now, that, tons of white, not tons, but a lot of white. So I just took the residue of the paint that I had in the brush and right alongside of it, mixed a little white and a little Naples yellow, and I'm gonna test this. It's probably a little lighter than I want, but it's not too, I'm not too far off here. And that's why I use this little brush in the beginning. This little is for expedience. It's literally, I, I, I can move very quickly from one area to another with it. So that's my reasoning. It's not a, it's not a, a brush for refining your painting by any stretch of the imagination. It's really designed to lay gesso down, but it works pretty well for oil. And I, it's interesting, I've talked to a lot of other artists. A lot of artists have different brushes that, they're, that they use that are not necessarily the traditional painting brushes that we all think of. A little bit more green into it as it comes forward. And I, I kind of discovered that just watching a lot of different, the way a lot of different artists work. And, you know, it's interesting because when you're in art school, as I was, you learn the way to paint, right? And then you start messing around on your own, you talk to other artists, and you, all of a sudden you realize there is no the way to paint. There is the way that works for you. And I think that's probably the most, one of the most important lessons I learned as I progressed is that, so I fuss around with a lot of different things just to see the different kind of characteristics I can get in my painting. And I think it's, I think it's beneficial. A little darker, not much. Just we get a little variation in that water. Definitely pretty green up in here. You want to get like, a little bit of a tone down right about here because I've added water. Now, if I were in location, I could see that. I, I'm not. And you know, when you're if you've painted, which if you painted in these areas, generally there's things you can remember. Uh, now, as it approaches the um, the building, the wall of the building, it gets a little darker and a little bit more green. So we're gonna kind of just fuss some color. That's too dark. Fuss a little bit of color back into it. There, off the wall, down here. All right, and as it turns the corner, it has a lot more green, blue green, right about here. So I just took ultramarine and sap green added to the color I was painting with. We'll just kind of hit here and it fades as it goes over. I'm not sure why. And then down at the bottom of the pier, we have a little bit of that color kind of works its way up in here. It's some of the areas, some of the stuff we have to guess at because I, it's not in front of me. And you know, I, when I paint on location, sometimes I have things I wanna paint around. And a lot of times you do have to do a little guessing and figuring out, you know, unless, unless you're gonna paint 100% of what's exactly in front of you, the way it looks. Very seldom, very seldom do I do that. Um, I always end up changing. I don't know if it's because I have uh, background illustration where very seldom you could work, uh, you were had the exact reference that you needed. So it could be, could be that, I'm not really sure, but it's what I do. It may not be a necessity for all artists. Okay, the one thing I didn't get is the lighter version. 
right in here. And there's a piece of something in there. I don't know if I'm gonna put that in there. A little bit more ochre into that same color. Well, not too much ochre, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, so let's leave it alone. We don't, I, I, I mean, I could, I see a lot more I can do. Hopefully we're gonna have the time to go back to it. So let's start kind of with this wall work up. This is kind of the star. So I'm kind of almost gonna leave that for last. So let's get this wall, this wall, and then we'll do the lighting at the very end. Then we'll get this in, meaning the orchard and the foreground, and then we'll go back and really spank light into it, okay? So wall, what color is it? It's gray, gray brown. So how do you mix gray brown, ultramarine, and your brown, asphaltum or burn umber? And what value is it? It's darker than the background. So you're all these questions you're always asking yourself. In you know, it's like your thought process is is important. You're relating. You're relating that value to that value. So I may have this a little too dark actually now that I see it. Um, a little warmer. First stroke tells me right now I'm not warm enough. It's a little too much in the for my taste. So I threw a little bit more uh, asphalt and a little bit more there. That feels better. We're gonna go right straight over. A little bit now, now it feels a little warm and I feel like I need to throw some blue. So I just mixed a little bit more as ultramarine into the same color. Don't feel just because you have a color down that that's the exact color that covers that entire mass. So we're gonna go this way, right here. And bring it down, bring it down behind this. Now, where else do I see that? As I come down here, it gets warmer. What does that mean? More of your brown, more of your asphalt in, in this case. Um, feels pretty good. Oh, I like that ugly blue that kind of came out of the tail end of my brush. Those are those, those, are those happy accidents. All right, then we have happy accidents and we have crappy accidents. Um, meaning when those happen, those are the ones you want to get rid of. Bring out the dark. That might be the wrong spot. I think it's the right spot. So you're making an offer. <laughs> Typically, when I say when I'm mixing a color, you're making an offer. You're saying this is the color, and then all of a sudden you may go, oh no, it's not. And similar here. Let's use the same color right now. Pretty dark down here. It's definitely darker, similar up here, but really chewed up. I mean, there's a lot of stone work. So I can kind of just take my brush and I still had residue of other colors in there and I'm squeezing it out now on my palette. So it's I'm getting a lot of that stuff out of the base of the brush near the ferrule. Please. When you do this and you get a, get a wonderfully textured wall like this, I'm gonna tell you, don't rely on a color, just keep mixing colors. And generally it's gonna be blues, browns, and whites because that's, that's the earth tones. It really is more in the earth tone range. Throw more white into it, not enough. Throw a little bit more. Make your strokes different because that's what gives the character. I, I know, I, you know, I realized in doing these demos and actually talking out loud a lot, that I, I actually use the word character a lot. Um, and it's, it's literally because to me, that's one of the most important parts of a painting. Unless you're painting something slick and clean, always character, character. It can be character of depiction of the specific element you're painting. It can be the character of your brushwork, uh, the character of the thickness of your paint. It can be all those things, but all of them have characters, characteristics. And the more you paint, the more you learn about different characteristics and how to achieve them. A lot of times you achieve them accidentally. And you know what? You store that up 
a little bit of that reservoir in your brain and you use them at other times. I always say, I feel like I learned as much, if not more, from my mistakes that I do from what I do that works. And that's one of the reasons I, I always tell people, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Literally, don't be afraid. Make them. And then, you know, if you get used to making mistakes, then you don't get frustrated. Then you know, you, in other words, then you know you can paint your way out of it. I used to, uh, a good friend of mine down in Southern California, Dan Cooper, he and I used to have a lot of discussions about this kind of stuff about, um, you know, just go for things, paint yourself in a corner and then figure out the way out. Or another good friend of mine, Dan McCaw says, painting is like trying to sneak into a ballpark. You try this way and it doesn't work. You try that way and it doesn't work. You try, keep trying. And finally, you find your way in. I never knew he said that. Huh? I never knew he said that. Yeah, I love that. Which is true. You, you discover, and that's kind of the point that I'm trying to make. You discover things as you're painting. And you learn how to use those things as you continue painting. And, you know, edge control. I mean, I learned, learned a lot just messing around with brushes and not drawing and just having to having to, to teach myself how to paint myself out of a corner. So I threw a little of a burnt sienna into it just so I get a little flavor into this wall. It's a little too much, but that's okay. Okay. This feels about right in here, but now we got a nice kind of a blue gray part of that wall back there. It's similar to the uh, to the background, probably a little warmer. Maybe throw a little bit of, let's, let's see what this looks like. Just for the heck of it. I think I'm wrong, but yeah, I am. I need to go a little lighter. Let's try it again. Okay, and it goes a little darker over to the edge, which is kind of cool right there and then a little lighter as it moves away from it. So I'm just constantly working with the same brush, adding a little white, adding a little blue, letting the colors kind of work their way together. So I'm not mixing up, nothing here's a clean color, right? So why mix a clean color? I mean, come on. A little bit of texture in this, right at the front particularly, right about there. It's just, I just took the exact same color and pushed it back in. And so I have some up in here. I can actually add a little bit texturally, just to kind of hit, have some fun, add some more texture into it. Step back about two feet from where I was at, and I'm going to continue. Because you, you just have to keep moving. If you're painting plain air, by God, you really need to keep moving. Because if you're painting plain air in the sun, particularly, if you're painting plain air on a cloudy day, you're probably you got more time. But if you're painting on a nice, brightly lit day, you know that it's not gonna stay that lit like that forever. So you're gonna have to keep moving. Even if you don't feel like you're really done with an area, you've gotta keep moving. All right, let's get, let's see, this is working okay, I think. This is probably not wide enough. I don't care right now. Let's get a little bit of that orchard in. Um, sap green, just mixing all these colors. What I'm doing is I'm, on my palette, I'm mixing across. So I started, this is up here on this side, and then I went a little darker, a little darker, and now I'm going back to the green. So I'm, I'm kind of cleaned my brush with a rag. So I didn't pull every color out of my brush because I want them to intermix. So I have, took sap green and yellow ochre. And I might be okay right here. Boy, I'm close, huh? Not, I want to be dark, but that's a nice mid-tone. A little greener in spots, a little more yellow in spots, but it's, it's a nice mid-tone to start with. So, you know, I'm not going all the way to the edge right now. Because that's going to be light. I don't want to have to layer too many layers of paint to get to that edge. So we got this nice mid-tone. 
maybe I'll put a little sap, a little bit more ochre into it. And we'll come down and get a few little lighter spots down in here as it comes down to the wall. We get some darker spots, some more light spots. Yeah, nice light color, break that up a little bit. More Naples, more ochre, it's into the same color. So I get a little bit more color variation, a little textural variation as we move up a little thicker. And that's, that's why I didn't paint that edge initially. I wanted the lighter edge. So I've got a little place for it to go. Um, I'm probably gonna need some yellow on my palette um, just to hit some of those final yellows, but I'm gonna to go to the darker greens first. So I'm gonna take, the, again, the sap, move in the same color, I'm gonna bring a little ultramarine into it, which is quite a bit darker. A little of the... Uh, yeah, a little, yeah, a little yellow. And so I went a little darker on the green. Probably, I think I'm gonna go a little warmer too. A lot of times in the recesses, of greens, uh, I need to warm them up. So often I will use an umber or a burnt sienna or something along that line. So on the palette, that actually looks quite red. I don't know how it looks to all of you, but value-wise, I'm trying for all this kind of value variation. I see, and I'm looking at how it relates to the wall and how it relates to the front wall. I see it as darker, cooler, but not outrageously cool. So that's why I use the, uh, the burnt sienna a little bit to kind of, for lack of a better word, to mellow that green down so it isn't too acidy. As I've mentioned many a time, with, particularly with greens, you can get really terribly, terribly acidy, meaning your, your color just is way too biting. It just stands out too much. It doesn't fit in comfortably. And that's when, when usually refer to color looking acidy, it tends to be too bright and it just does not sit comfortably into uh, the rest of your painting. Let's get that in here. We're gonna get it in here quick because the reason being in painting foliage particularly, you wanna be able to paint layers. And so you gotta get a layer down before you can get another layer down. So. That's why we kind of just want to scrub it in there initially. And there's some lights breaking through, which I will add. A little nice edge up here, a little bit of breaking and a lot more warm color. So I brought some ochre into that same cup, a lot of ochre, almost pure ochre I can see right in here. It's still, I still have the residue of green in my brush but ochre fits very comfortably with greens particularly. So a lot more ochre. I see the tree, this bush up at this point, get quite ochre. And it moves its way down into the bushes. So what we'll do if I, if I play my cards right in terms of layers, I will um, get enough variation of greens and values into this area so it'll look convincing. And I, another word I like to use a lot uh, when we're painting is, is convincing. And it's simply, the reason I use that word is really simple. It's because that's what we're doing. We're convincing anybody that looks at this, this is a wall, that's a mountain, that's water, and that's a house. We're convincing them. And we're convincing them with all these wonderful little tricks that we learned as painters. All right? Uh, Now, once you get to the point where you can do that pretty good, and I don't know how long that takes, 40 years, uh, just joking. Once you, get, once you get where you can actually do that pretty good, then comes the part that I'd say where it really starts to get hard. What exactly do I wanna do? So I threw a little, I put a stray ochre down, I threw a little bit of asphalt because I didn't like, it was just too bright, too fast. So there's a little bit of asphalt and I could even, it wouldn't even hurt if I took a little bit of a light blue and mixed it in there, just a little bit. Just, I, that feels much more comfortable to me. It was popping. I can, I can always go back and make it stronger. Also, I don't, even though it's a beautiful flat wall, I don't want to paint it as flat as it looks. I want it to have the character or as referred, the, the 
history of a patina, the, the kind of finish on the building that it gets over history, over time. So we see that under the rafters, it gets darker, still stays kind of neutral. So I just took in the same color, I threw a little bit more light blue and a little bit more asphalt to hit the valley all right. I'm about right there, all right, just about there. We can take that same color and move it. Well, I've got to do something. That's going to be the corner of the building right there. So I'm going to take a rag just so I don't have to bite that, all that thick paint that I put on there. And I'm going to just wipe this a little bit. OK, so that's the corner of the building. And the reason I'm saying that at this point, it changes direction. We get our perspective. It isn't a radical change, but it is a change. So we want to go ahead and get that. All right. So now we've got pretty much the perspective. The reason I don't want this bright, I want this bright. Because that's where the sun is hitting. So even if I have to come in and add a little bit of a blue gray back into this color, it'll help. So now next thing I want to do is I want to get kind of the base roof color. First thing I need to do is kind of match the background color. I think I've got it somewhere here on my palette, but I probably painted over it a couple of times. So it's somewhere up in here. No, no, not quite. Let's keep going. Closer this time, I know. Okay. Now I've got that color. Let's put a couple of passes in here as long as I've got it. I'm just looking, I see some striations <coughs> back in this area. <clears throat> Value is almost identical. So nothing pops out. But what that, just that little bit does. <clears throat> um, what that does is it adds a little bit of bump to this area, bump. You know, so it, it tends to begin to indicate some of the stuff that's going on. Next, let's get the roof in. I mentioned that, and I'm going to go for the mid tone. Now, there's three tones that I see in the roof. There's actually more, but I'm going to say there is a very light, almost white. There's a very dark, which look like lines, and then there's a mid tone, which is warmer. I'm painting the mid tone, and I'm using way too much red. A little Naples yellow. I got to gray it down because it's nowhere near the kind of red that I threw on there. So I'm throwing some ochre into it and maybe a little blue to kind of knock it back. It's just too strong. Let's see what this looks like. I'm, not, I'm closer than I thought I was. Let's put it that way. Still not there. A little bit more blue and, and burnt sienna. Okay, that's, I'm going to live with that with maybe a touch more ochre into it and thin it out a little bit so I can paint back on top. But there's that's what I'm using for my mid-tone. And here's the shape, because I had the shape wrong. The, the point of the roof is off to the left. Now, we're going to paint the top part. So we get the base tone in. Once again, as I stated right at the beginning, shapes. So I'm looking at shapes now. I'm really. I'm able to begin to judge the piece a little bit more because I'm seeing shapes. I'm not seeing lines. And I can see what is right, what is wrong. So we're going to put, we're going to shorten this a little bit because if I make it that tall, it's going to touch the top of the page. So we're just going to shorten the chimney. And we'll keep that in there. What I did is just made a lighter version of that, pretty much. It's kind of a muted version. It's lighter, knowing that I still have to. You know, by the way, I should mention, I am painting on a board that is not white. The reason I state that is pretty simply, it's very important that you're aware of that. Um, I know I can always go lighter than this. In other words, if that's, I'll show you where white is compared to that. That's where white is. So you can see I'm in, a, I'm in kind of a gray version, which is good because I don't want to paint pure white on this edge at the end. 
I want to paint white with some Naples. So it has a feeling of warmth. For example, this wall here, let's do it right now. I, I normally wouldn't do it at this time, but I want to make a point as to why I'm doing what I'm doing in other places. So I took white, I took Naples yellow, and I took a little ochre. And we're going to try that color right there. And that is going to be lighting that wall, illuminating. OK, so you can see it's it's brighter and I can still and I have not gone near to white, which is fine. Um, to get a little bit of information up in here, could it paint the shadow side of that, which is a little bit darker? So let's get it in here quickly because it's some of this little picky stuff is what takes time. The very end, if I can indicate as much as I can now, so I have very little work to do at the end, uh, it'll make my life much easier. You notice I'm using a different grip on the brush because I'm doing more what I call control strokes. The grip on the brush, very important. I, it's what most people paint their entire painting with this grip. Um, I paint the last part of the painting with it. And it's just something I found out about myself. I tighten up too much if I, if I paint this way throughout the whole painting. I lose characteristics that I that I kind of like. So I, I purposely stay with. Um, a bigger brush and a different grip. And that's the reason for it. So paint down in here, a little bluer, a little bit more blue into that color. Right there. It's more blue than I wanted, but it's not bad. A little bit back in here. And while I've got that in the brush, let's add a little character to the wall. I don't have to bring it back later. You know, when you got it, use it. You don't have to re remix it. I want to go darker under that awning now. So I used um, asphaltum and I used uh, ultramarine blue. And we're going to try and go, you know, I think I might use an all stick. Don't always do it, but I'm going to because of the scale on this. The smaller painting, it's a lot easier. All I'm going to do is use it right here. So I end up with kind of a nice straight line. That's all. And a little darker. And that I'll just do freehand. I don't care. This, that's our wall. So we're going to come right. Almost. There we go. So for spectrum looks OK. Still don't like. I still think I'm way too dark here. But that's, that's an adjustment. So let's take the smaller brush, the asphaltum, the ultramarine together. This is my pretty much an absolute dark. I could throw some alizarin into it. And I can kind of see it warm up. So I might, there's a touch of alizarin in this color. What, what I'm going to do, I paint the dark of the pier right there. And you notice how it didn't stick. What that tells me is the paint's too dry. So I have to either add turp or my solvent-free gel. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we want it to go back here. Continuity of the period. This I'm making up, I can't see it, but I'm pretty sure that's what happens. Uh, we've got a couple and I'll use them now as placeholders because I'll end up painting over them. But a couple of the pillars, one about here. I don't think those are called pillars that, that are holding up the pier. I think they're piers. Probably. Okay. That looks pretty good. A little darker back here. Okay, let's leave it. Now, that blue green can go a lot darker. That's what I just learned. Um, but also, I don't like the fact that this is underdone here. So I've got to got to get that dark back here, here, fill it in. Like I said, if I paint over them, I paint over them. I can always put them back in there. Get a little of the 
reflection feeling in the water there. All right, let's keep moving because we're, we're moving around this thing and we're about 40 minutes in, which leaves me about 40, about, about 50 minutes left on the thing. So I gotta keep moving. Let's get a little bit of the indication. Whoops, it's a warm, I went way too warm. It's a warm dark and I went way too dark. I'll balance it some, you just you keep painting it till you get it right. And last but not least, not, not, let's not forget, very kind of a soft, warm, neutral. This is, and they're about here. So I, I'm off in the shape. But yeah, that's just about right. Color and value is about right. And the other side, color and value is about right. All right. Placement, eh, I don't know how good that is, but color and value is right. So that's, I got part of it right. And there's the white, which is in shadow. Kind of interesting, huh? Interesting, it's in shadow and it's white. So first thing I want to do is paint that part and that part, and then we'll get a little white element. For this, I'm actually gonna grab a smaller brush. I've got it handy here, let's grab this thing. I know I have a better smaller brush, I just don't know where it is. Um, you know, you know, all, I, I have usually most of my tools right here at my disposal. There it is, there it is. It's a small, it's like a number two uh, flat, and it, allows me to do smaller things. So I'm gonna take white, blue, because I've got to paint white in shadow, right? I don't want white, bright white. So white and shadow has, and I can see it has kind of a bluish cast. So that made it bluer than it appears in the piece, but the value is right, and that's my main concern. I get the value right, the colors off, it'll still work. If you get the color right and the values off, it won't work. I'm gonna write that one down. Value, you know, I've stated this many, many times. I, 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 it's a line that I heard, I love it. And that is that, that's terrible. <laughs> that, uh, Value does the work and color gets the credit. Could go with beautiful color. Well, yeah, but if the value doesn't work, I don't care how beautiful the color is, it is not gonna work as a piece. So that's what, that's what I mean by value does the work and color gets the credit. Darkening a little bit of a, more of a shadow here. I don't like, I felt that was a little too light, which means I'm gonna have to darken the, uh, the base of that roof, kind of mess that up, fix it. Okay, that's key. As that tone moves back, by the way, I did it once before, but I'm gonna do it again, right about from, right about here, back, there we go. I don't know what I, what I did there, it's not supposed to be there. That's background color. That's why you always have that background color. And you, I always try, mix your background color, a little hint here, mix your background color with as few colors as you can so you can always go back and match it. And I didn't match it. Do what I say, not what I do. It's another great line, okay? Um, we'll go back on that roof and get it to zing. But right now we need to get the rest of it set up. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paint the interior of the window because it's a little vacant here. The interior of that window is dark over here. And it's pretty dark here. I put a curtain back in and change it around a little lighter if I want to. But let's let's at least get a tone in there so I, I don't have to worry about trying to fill in the right color. Important point, uh, I taught a landscape class this semester. I don't know, some of them might even be listening. Uh, but 
one of the things I was trying to tell him is get a base down and then paint over it. Don't try and paint the right color right up next to the next color. It, number one, it's going to take longer. And chances are you're going to have to do some major adjustments anyway. It's just not going to work the way you want it to. So we're going to uh, darken the orchard a little bit with some more ochre and some more sap. And we'll come up here and we'll kind of get some really nice edge quality. And I'm, I'm mixing other colors. As I'm painting these greens, I have a lot of other colors on my palette every now and then. As I see a green change here, I just pick up the what I think the appropriate color would be to, to make that kind of transition. You know, that, that quality of the edges are beginning to work here. You notice I said beginning. I don't know what that white thing is there. It's probably something on the wall and I'm not gonna put it in. Don't be afraid to leave things out. If you don't know what they are, don't just paint them because it's there, particularly in the photograph. If, if you're painting in reality, chances are you're gonna be able to tell because you're gonna be able to tell what that is. But very often, I found this in, working from a lot of photographers, sometimes I go, what, what the heck is that thing? And if I don't know it, sometimes I very seldom paint it because I'm just putting a stroke down and it might be something that actually might hurt the, the actual painting. And I wanna break the wall here with some of these yellow greens. And then we have a beautiful yellow, bright yellow. This is lights hitting it right in here. And there's some dark yellows there first, but it's right about here. All right, bright yellow right about here. Coming up and breaking the building, mixing it back. That, oh, you know what that is? That's foliage. That's what that is. It's just a lot of light hitting it up here. So I want it to feel natural. I don't want it to, to all of a sudden get light. So I'll, I'll make it kind of a transition. Too light. I had so much white and yellow in that into that green. It was just kind of jumping out at me too much. And I do a lot of, when I do foot foliage, I'll go back, I'll go forward. I may go into it the next day and add things that I didn't see the first day. And sometimes I'll notice I pronounce something too strong and I'll go back and, you know, undefine it a little bit more, if you will. Just because you've gone over it doesn't mean it's done. So if I stand back and I'm looking at my reference and I look at the, at the uh, image, it starts to look okay. A little more ochre, a little bit more sienna, a little more ochre. I'll come back in here, some few subtle warms, probably more warms than there are, but as I stand back, it looks okay. Don't like this, but I haven't finished off the window. I think, I think I've, what happened is when I deepened the, um, the area around it, it made it stand out too much. So what I may have to do is take that blue color and push it back darker. So it feels like it's more in shadow. It feels better. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit more light to that color. And I'm gonna do a couple of Verticals, and I'm not real good at verticals, so a lot of times I'll use a mall stick on bigger painting. We'll come in there and there. Okay. And then down at the base of it, um, right. A little bit of that curtain back in there, but it's dark, it's in, so, but it's right here. Okay, so that's the curtain and there's a little curtain on this side. And then the back inside the deep recesses of that room. <laughs> um, it's much darker. Okay, so now it feels like curtains. 
Uh, window feels okay, a little off here. So we just take ochre, yellow. I want something in, around this color. Yeah, that's what we want. Maybe a little darker. Just to come right about that part. So we even that up. So now at least it starts to look relatively correct. Um, I laid the roof in earlier, but I forgot that up here, we have a little roof on that. There's light on it and lighter, but not as quite as bright and not as much warm underpainting. Is a little, and we're gonna illuminate to see that you know. Now this back behind, that's another, it looks like another chimney. So let's get that tone in there. The reason I wanna keep it in there is it helps define the dark of it, helps define this uh, little interesting looking chimney up front. So now we haven't added lights. We're gonna start doing that in a second. Um, I'll worry about these a little later. I think I'm gonna paint the shadow of those right now. And they look really neutral, slightly cool. And there is a, a band on it, which is really gonna make it work. So we're gonna look at something like this as a shadow, which looks just about right. All right. And all that is is the blue and, and we kind of wanna mess that edge up a little bit because it's weathered. And we have three of them here and I only have two. Um, so the first one is gonna be right about there. I need to go a little lighter, there we go. And the second one is, well, that first one's really more over here. If I have that second one in there right, the second one is about here. Whoops, too dark. And I've raised it to see guys know on purpose. And then the one back behind is here. And they all go down into the water. One, two, water comes over, get a little bit more overlapping. So we've got those kind of laid in. Well, I've got that color in my brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. And I can see that right, it's kind of blue. It's a lot of activity a little here. There's a cast shadow here. A little bit more variation in that wall, a little more variation in that wall, a little bit back there. And we've got a distant wall, which I have ignored. That's right about here. Maybe a little bit more value. And that swim platform, which is right about there, okay? So we've got the basis of the painting in here. Now we need to do refinements. And I've got about 35 minutes to do kind of finishing and refinements. So let's start with this and work our way this way. Start with, with the star. We're gonna take that background. I, I am gonna do some, I'm gonna lighten that background. I told you it bothered me. So I am gonna stay with, this, go back to a, a gesso brush, pick up some white, pick up some blue, I'm gonna look at that up there. It's a lot bluer and whiter. Not quite that much. That was my test. This is what's nice about painting over. Some of that, back, you mix it into that background color. So as I move over, I'm pressing lighter, meaning that I'm getting this lighter blue eventually blending into the other blue. And if I wanna hit a little of a couple of the striations, I can do that at this time. And I can see it right here. I can see a little bit of light. I can see a little bit more light coming down here. Move it back in here. Bring it back down behind this.
Okay, that start at least the background is starting to make sense to me now. All right, let's go into the to the actual home itself. Um, first thing I want to do is with my, this little number two, blue, white, and maybe a little brown or something to kind of dull it down so it isn't just a blue. But I want to paint in shadow the brickwork. Starts about here. That's the corner right there. It's very important to know that. And then we have one, two, three that I see. So let's do the middle one. That looks pretty good value and color wise. One, two, three. Okay. It's okay. As it goes up, it goes deeper into shadow. So I've got the same color with a little more brown in it. And we're gonna bring it up here. And we're gonna put another one right here. Okay, so that takes it into shadow. Now, so we move around to the front of the building. Number one, let's get the front of the building and I'm gonna take straight Naples yellow. I think I can use almost that direct because this will be the yellow of the building. There's not that much yellow. I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna take white to that Naples, very similar to the color there's, a, and I'm really gonna start hitting, first thing I'm gonna hit is this. So that should feel like there's white, it's white and Naples. And there are windows, one, and another one here, two, that I see back there. And then the yellow part, I'm just gonna add straight Naples, as I said, and see how that works. And we're just gonna kind of paint that that way. And then we've got, as it moves back, it, it has a little, bit, a little bit of an orange. So I'm taking some ochre, some white, just letting my brush fairly touch the red. And let's see what we can end up with here. We can end up close. I'll be darned. Didn't always work like that. It worked. Doesn't, it doesn't happen for me on the first shot too often. Um, we have a little bit of light defining right here. Now that's the white and Naples. I take the white and Naples once again, because this is the illumination. This is the light. This is the sunlight. And I'm going to take and I'm going to hit it right there. That's too strong. There, and that comes out. It's there. That's that's too thick, and I can ch chop that down. I'd rather have it in there now and be able to come in and chop it. Um, and on this, we have it right about here. I'm trying to be a little more delicate here. There, and that part of the chimney, a little bit in here. And you can see where you're starting, we're starting to get the feeling of light. I'm gonna do it to the roof, but not right now. All right, uh, mainly because I have to keep moving. So even if I have to come back, I know things that, that I can do quickly at the end if I need to. Part of the window, part of the window, part of the window. There's a fourth in there too, right about there. And a little bit of a shadow, similar color, kind of a gray color, kind of a gray brown, right about there and there. And so just those few little things begin to make that work. I don't like the drawing up in here. I think I'm really gonna to need to kind of do some work right up in here at the very end. Um, and I need to clarify that window uh, shutter a little bit more. I need to hit that. I can kind of leave some of this if I need to, but I do need to start hitting some negatives down in there. See all the things that are coming through? So what they're doing is they're helping to find some trunks. So we're going to hit one, two, a little tiny one, three. Now we're going to move it on over. It's 
kind of an off-white yellow. We're going to bring one about here. I'm almost using this color with a little bit of, of other colors mixed in. There's a wall back in there. Oops, messed it. It's easy enough to fix. You see that? That's what I mean about just don't just put your strokes down. Don't be afraid. If it doesn't work, fix it. Here. And I'm mixing this into the color. So I'm getting some greens back in here, right here. And some nice pretty greens back behind. It would be foliage behind. And what this is doing is telling me where I can put some positive tree trunk strokes. Because these are all negatives. And if we move to this side, I can see it get a little warmer. Can get a little bit right there. A little warmer still. Oh, I kind of like that stroke. Now we get some lighter ones right up in here. That's part of the walkway. It looks like oh, there's a walkway and it kind of comes up, it comes pull it right about in here. Real light. Works its way back. Up here, another piece of light coming through. So just breaking up that activity is really helping. So next thing that's going to help if I can get it in here correctly is the illumination on the statuary. White with a touch of Naples. Now, if I were doing a finish, finish painting, I'd probably do about three values to sneak up to these lights. But in a quick one, or if I was play, painting us in plain air, I'd be doing what I'm doing here. And I try and intermix some of these colors. So if it, if it blends into the background, well, I mean, into the paint that's already there, it works fine. Like that's. When I stand back, it's effective. Let's put it that way. Is it great? No, but it's a, it, it's very effective for a, a plain air, you know, a 90 minute plain air piece. This is where you can slow down and be accurate if you've got the time. And again, I think I've used this term before. It needs to feel accurate. It doesn't have to be accurate. It needs to look as though it is. Now you can see it's starting to lighten up. It's starting to, that's why I did not want to get this color too light in the beginning, because this is where the light is hitting. So hit a little bit right there and a little bit right there. And then come down on the base. So come down on the base. This base is higher perspective. It's closer to us. It's up a little higher. Get a little bit of color and value variation back in the shadow. If I had time, I'd go back in that shadow and even do more. A little bit in here. Here. Got to add a couple of darks back in there to really get it to snap. It's number two, um, flat is just a great brush for this kind of stuff. Okay. So it feels like I've painted detail. I have not, just so you know, I have not painted it. It just looks, it may look like, it probably looks like it more on screen than it does here. Um, added some ochre. And where do I see ochre? I see it sneaking down right in front of this shadow, right here. And it becomes part of this foreground wall. And then there's another one back behind it, which is about here. And it gets lighter and eventually works its way down. Still, still a warm yellow right here, right? And kind of down at the base of that. So we've kind of indicated that wall. Now, the uh, this is whiter and it's warmer, whiter, a little bit more yellow. And it's right here and it's this part of this wall. And it kind of angles out. And that's, I think I have that shadow too dark to see base though. And it's pretty easy. I'll lighten it in a second, show you what I mean. 
So I'm going to just take a little blue and white, push it back into this, this color a little bit more. So that shadow becomes lighter. That feels better. It doesn't feel as, it felt very heavy before. Now it doesn't. But I have to trim this part of it down because I messed it up. So let's get a little bit of the top of the wall. And the light is coming really from way above. So that's probably going to be the whitest area. It's white maples. And what I need to do is I need to get a nice edge on this brush. So it looks like that, but it looks like that. And what I'm going to do is at this point, I may, I really may need to use, I actually am going to use some medium because I need it to sit on top. There we go. Got the white of that wall. That's working okay. There's a little greenery that I didn't get. I didn't say shrubbery, I said greenery. Uh, with a, a nod to Monty Python. Uh, only Monty Python fans will get that. Okay. Um, the front of the wall, which comes here. Right up. Looks pretty good. The front of this wall. And there's one whole wall here. It's a little warmer. And it sticks out about here. Okay. So we're kind of painting these surfaces. Now, the edge of this wall in the back uh, if I could do that, I would like to, where is it? I'd like to do that with a knife, truthfully, because um, I, I'll get a thinner edge. So what I'm going to try and do is take white and a little Naples, lay it out on my palette, mush it around a little bit, add a little medium to it, get it on the edge of the knife if I can, as far on that edge. So what I can do is this, if it works. It worked pretty good. It didn't look great. I think I need to augment it with a little bit of paint here. Going to thicken it up a little bit at the top. And then hit the top of that wall. And the front of that. Got the front of that. Now we need to hit the top of this. Top of this wall right here. Right there there and then swing it back to the corner and we'll get the hold if I can top of this that he is the small stick again just just because I'm gonna make a nice long I usually use it when I gotta make long strokes lost it lost the paint picked it up again okay that starts to work Let's carry it on up to about road blocking you. Sorry if I am. Okay, so we got the light on the top of the wall. Probably a little too thick. It's okay. And the wall changes direction. Okay. So we got the light there. So now we have that light hitting on the top of the wall. Got to leave myself enough time to get the roof stuff in on the roof. Uh, Going to take more Naples. I mean, some more ochre with that. We're going to put this whole wall in with a little bit more ochre into it. I'm going to leave that dark. There's some beautiful stains down at the base of the wall. So I added, took some of the browns and the blues and whatever colors and come up with and add some. Once again, we're adding character, that ugly word that I use a lot. I don't know a better way to define what this kind of work other than trying to achieve character in your painting. It moves down around the bottom, down on this wall, it has some light, but not bright light. If I do need bright light, I can put it in at the end. Brighter light on the top. Some brighter light on the top of that wall, on the top of this wall right here, thick paint. Whoa, that was thick. Let's get some other colors so we get this whole kind of textural feel going on in there. That feels, it 
it feels okay. It's not accurate compared to what I see, but it feels pretty good. So that's half the battle, everybody. And it feels kind of normal. And back on this wall, I could add a lot. I could just chop around forever to give it the character. I definitely could add more chop. That's too light up in here. Different directions with my brush. Okay, I don't want to dwell too long on it. I want to move from there to, to, the, to these. Uh, so let's go with the light on those and then we'll add coloration and uh, the stripes. So we're going to do the light first. The white and the yellow, once again, I'm going to use this just because I think it'll save me a little time. And mess it up a little bit, mess up that edge so it isn't so harsh. It'll start harsh, but it doesn't have to end harsh. And this one. And the one in front. Mess up the edge a little bit, like I said. It just adds the textural aspect to it. So we got our three working pretty well. Now there's a couple of boys. I don't know if I'm gonna put those in. If I have time, I will. If I don't have time, I won't. Put some color variation into it. Put some rust colors because I can kind of see them. So, nah, it's way too red. A little darker. Right there. There. So there's a little variation in the shadows. The shadows aren't just a flat color, and the lights won't be hopefully just a flat color. And again. This, if you're working and you have the time, these are the kind of little wonderful, fun areas that you guys can get back into and really create all the textural qualities that you want. So we're gonna get those three kind of laid in, let's lay the other one in and then let's get the stripes in there. And then I'm probably not gonna have much more time to fuss on those because I do wanna get back to the roof and the water. So, A little bit of reflected light. I can bring some blue if I want to. Just notice that there, I see it a little bit in here. And it's actually a warmer reflected light up in here. Okay, so now let's get got a little bit of, of the stains. And I'll look, this one's got a lot more stains on it. I can see darks. Oh, I see some beautiful darks down at the base. Gotta be careful because I, I don't want to run out of time. But you got these nice dark. This probably has them too. Okay. Let's get um, a little bit of the shadow of the blue. So I just took ultramarine, mixed it in with that brown, kept it in the blue range. And we're going to try it this way. Perfect. I don't know what perfect, but close, huh? Shadow, not gonna paint the whole thing in. Shadow there, shadow there. Uh, this one, it goes, they go this way, kind of stuff that you probably wouldn't make up on your own, but when you get a chance to paint from reality, you can see, well, it just changes direction. They all aren't the same, which kind of makes it more interesting. I'm getting little fingerprint marks on that wall. Didn't bother me at all. Another one here. Let's get it right there. Now, if I need to sharpen up the back side of it, I will do that. And another one here. Remember, it's got to stay darker in the shadow. So you kind of have to very often do you have to keep, and they 
kind of fade away. It's like they've been eaten away. Like down in here, animals don't see them. But up at the top, it's got that wonderful little top notch. Sure, I'm not uh, stating it the way that they would state it. I'm sure they make fun of me by calling it a top notch. Um, now, as we go down on this one at the base, there's some real dark. I know it's right here. It's really dark. So I'm going back to my blue and a little bit of asphalt. I'm in there. I'm going to put that nice dark one in there, maybe another one about here, maybe a third. This one will thicken up a little bit. Let's put a dark one down here since I can't see it. Let's just assume. And on this one, they're going this way. There's my shadow. It's, this is pattern painting, and it's something when I get into teaching still life, I talk a lot about it. You paint the form first and the pattern second. Okay, so now we're going to paint them on the light side, right? So we're going to take a little bit of the light blue, the ultramarine, so it's got a little bit more color. Light blue, ultramarine, maybe a little green. Let's see what happens with it, with this, how it looks. That needs, it's too light. Let's try, it's probably because I'm painting over light paint. Yeah, I got to get more medium because it's blending right into the paint. This may work better. Yeah. And you don't have to paint them real neat because they're chewed up anyway, you guys. They're, you know, they're not real clean. Uh, I missed a little bit on this one. We need a few more, one in here, maybe one down about here. This is true impressionism. Very, very rough, but hopefully effective. Nope, try it again. I go a little lighter, I want it to stand out a little more. Add a little bit more light to it, white to it. Try it one more time. There, there, there. Okay, let's go down to the water. Oh, I know what I do. Gotta go. What do we got? We got about almost 10 minutes, which isn't enough, but what the heck? Let's get that uh, top of the here and I, which I didn't do. Okay, so now we have the light on the top of the pier. So what I, one of the things I want to do is I want to get some more, get the water feeling a little bit better. So I'm going to take uh, some number eight filbert here, and I'm going to darken the blue that I was using and add a little green to that same color. I think I'm okay. Maybe a little, a touch of a brown or something, just to, so it doesn't come out too green, but what I want to do is I want to go here, eh, a little bit more blue and green. Let's try it again. I got to be careful. I don't want to bump the camera, so I have to kind of go paint downhill, so it won't have quite uh, my finesse that I would like it to have, but what the hell, huh? The blue and the green. Gotta keep the values about right. It's all about value. It's not about whether that color is exactly the right color. It really is more about is the value the right value. And if the paint isn't sticking, you add medium. You either add turp or you add your uh, oil or solvent free gel, any one of them. And I'm going to lighten it a little bit and maybe get a little bit more activity down in here. And let's add some lights now because I've, I've stayed with the darks in the water. 
I've, I've got to watch my time on this because I do, I need to get it back into those roof lines. So white, Naples, let's see what we can do here. It's, it looks okay. It's a little bit of a clumsy brush stroke. So I'm going to a smaller brush, a little bit of a, let's see if I can have a little more success with this brush. That's about right. It's just, I don't know if I've had time to get it all in, but it is about right. When you don't have time, what you do is you take turp, and you just push it into the color that's already there. And I'm not, I'm not even looking at this point, I'm just painting. I'm gonna get some lights back in here. It's a little bit of a light behind. Picked up some red by accident. I'm just using experience that I've had painting water before to paint this right now because I just am not taking the time to study exactly what's going on. So I'm kind of trusting a little instinct here, which is not unusual. It would be the, if I went back into the studio and I didn't have my reference, that's what I would be doing. I'd be using knowledge and uh, whatever I've got stuck, you know, stashed away in my brain that I've done before that has worked is what I would be doing. Okay, we're gonna get up to the roof line in a second. Because the everything is kind of beginning to work except the roof. I still, I need work on that. I probably would do it um, off camera just because I, I don't want to spend the time going back on it. Even though these are rough, they kind of work, you know? And I notice, just notice on the top of each one of those that it's getting a lot of light. It's getting a little sliver of light right there. Okay, let's get the roof and we'll put a few of the negatives or the positives back in here. A couple of things in the window that it needs, but let's get the roof going. We need to add the lights and the darks. I'm gonna go with the darks first. Uh, ultramarine, burnt sienna. Are you actually gonna indicate the tile? I'm gonna indicate the tile. I don't, want to, I don't want them as strong as that. So if you're wondering, that's why I've... Perspective's important. The direction. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> Sound like I'm giving myself permission, which I am. Ah, now I need to hit this one more time because I didn't hit it dark enough. That's pretty dark, huh? There. Ah, it's not sticking. It's because I need more medium. Solvent-free gel to the, to the rescue. Look at that. Lay right on. Okay. So now that I've done that, let's go in with the lights. There. Oh, first thing I want to do is on this one back here. I see. Uh, 
And here I see it also. I can do this. Sometimes I'll do this at the very end. It's just adding kind of the feeling of the ends of the tile. And you can be really indicative, be kind of sloppy. They, you know, you got to remember, these are old. And so it's not like these tiles are perfectly machine made. So if they're a little off, let it happen. And adding the light. First of all, let's get the light on the top of the roof, which is here. I probably need to go over it again. I need to add a little bit more medium because that's kind of sweaty hat and you get so much wet paint you're painting into. Um, this is, it's just gonna happen. And you, the only way you can do it is to add medium. So we're gonna come down this side of the, of the aura. So that's where it's gonna get brighter because that's where the light's coming from. And I can use these nice choppy strokes like I'm doing because it's tile. So we got a little bit of the illumination there. A lot of the illumination, same. I'm gonna use my arm here so instead of the mole stick. We're gonna come in and we're gonna put little flickers. So some of the light from both beneath, some of the color from beneath fits into this. And I can do the same thing. It's a little warmer on the other one. So I can actually, add make this a little bit more of a, of a reddish tone. One of the things that I found when you paint tile, if they're standing out too much, they don't look good, take a clean brush and smear it. Okay. So now we're gonna, we want some variation on these. So we don't want them all the same, but for right now, we're just gonna kind of do a lot of this stuff. We're gonna use the lines that are there. Sometimes I think I'll just bring a stroke. A lot of times when I'm painting really fast, we'll just do this to get the feeling of the tile and then break it up later. And since I am going fast, that's what I'm gonna do. Break it up later on if you have if you have the time. The guy that I've seen that do, do this the best is a guy named David Curtis from England. And he has a tendency to be able to indicate these tile roads with the utmost ease. And you know, when you're painting for a deadline like this, which I'm trying to get this all done in the next five minutes, um, we want to basically what you're going to do is you're going to do little things that you probably wouldn't do if you were painting a little bit quicker. You want the effect there um, as best as you can get that that effect without and I'm going back to this brush and get clean some of this stuff up. Oh, I know what I told you. I did something I didn't like earlier and it was right here. See, see, I just trim that back down. Make it a nice, there we go. Feels better. And while I've got the color, if there's anything I want to add, you see how I got some lights back on those hills? I don't want them to pop out too much. So I'm going to keep them in the blue, in the blue range. But with that, and we can almost let your brush skip, like right here. And up front, a little violet, we're kind of a little violet kind of color. So it's just a hint of a lizard into that color. Kind of a dry brush if you can get it, because it'll give you kind of the the toothy look of the feeling of rocks. Oh, there we go.
that's all we're doing is you're kind of giving, trying to give a direction and a feeling of those hills back there. A couple of little spots that could be architecture, could be little things right in here. I don't want to indicate that boat, but I might want to indicate, uh, let's do a couple little tidbits about in here. One may be kind of coming down. And you, you can add to it. I can see I can lighten this a lot more. Um, and I can go back into that roof line. At about this point. And hit. And sometimes I'll do variations. So in this case, I've got warmer, a warmer coat. This probably is the best brush to do this with. And if you go too far with one, just keep going back. One of the things about doing these tile roads is you, you need to kind of go back and forth and back and forth. You're not going to get it in one shot. It's like I can see up here, could be brighter still. A little bit better shape there. And I put my finger down, got a brown right there. So you just pick up whatever background color and you just kind of add, and anything you add back here is going to really work, you know, because as long as you keep your values in check, it'll, because it'll stays back behind. So the last thing I'm going to do is a little bit of work, which I said I was going to do earlier uh, with darks. And I'm going to do it pretty fast. So not with maybe the finesse that I might want, but a few of the tree trunks. A little. Not that you have to put them in because I see them, but if I don't put them in, they just weren't there. Anything I can do to add a little authenticity to it, I will do. We're pretty much, I think we're pretty much at the end of, yeah. I'm, I'm a little over, which I usually am. So we're gonna do a little bit of that. to bring a little bit of that kind of a reflection down in the water. Kind of overdid that, probably break it up again. Break it up with the, lights and I'll probably add I'll probably darken this edge one more time there's looks to me there's a little bit of light not that I have to have it it's right about in here actually a little warmer than that just throw a little bit of red into the same color I like to just use chunky choppy strokes whenever I can just because I think it um when I'm doing old build, it's why I prefer to do old buildings and new neat ones, is you can use some real funky kind of chopped up strokes and they actually add to, here we go again, to the character of your, the image that you're trying to uh, portray. Just real quick, Tom wanted to know how uh, you said in the past how you clean your brushes really well and how is it different from oil to acrylic? I clean both of them the same way, but with oil, it takes longer. Acrylic, I, I pretty much start with soap and water. And um, I usually try and get hot water, get as much of the, of the, of just with water, get as much of the, of the color out of the brush as I possibly can. Then I, I usually use Murphy's oil soap. Um, and what I do is I use, I'll put some of that in my hand and scrub it until no more color comes out. I have no more color. When no more colors out, I wring the brush out really thoroughly. And um, eventually, when I've got all the brushes done, I will go and use a hair dryer. Um, excuse me, not hair dryer. Uh, conditioner. Hair conditioner. And I usually just pick it up at the dollar store, the cheapest hair conditioner I can buy. Um, I keep a couple bottles of it. And I do the same thing with oil. The only difference with oil, as opposed to acrylic, in oil, I start with turp or with Gamsol. And I use the Gamsol to get as much of the residue out as I can. 
you know, and squeeze it, rub it out on a paper towel until I get a lot of the color. I don't get all of it out, but I get a lot of the color out. And then I do the, exactly the same thing that I just got through telling everybody with, um, with my oil brushes, Murphy's Oil Soap. Uh, I go back and I work uh, it, you know, scrub it in my hand until I get literally all the color out. When that's done, wring it out. And then I put it, as I said, uh, put hair dryer in it or hair, hair, I keep saying hair dryer, hair conditioner in it. Um, and then I, now people say, well, what, what do you do? Well, after I get the hair conditioner in it, let me just take a clean brush. There's a clean brush. So I've got it really clean. After I just shape it with the hair conditioner and squeeze it out and get a nice shape. And then I lay it down on my palette and let it dry overnight. And it's fine the next day. It's that simple. It really is. Uh, and what you'll find is it will keep your brushes in really good shape. The next day, people say, well, do you have to wash it out the next day? Um, from my experience, no, you don't have to wash it out. It literally just comes out as you start painting. So little touches up in here. I see I've got a lot of little things I can fuss with. But you know what? I'm not going to right now. But I'll probably go back and put about 15 minute, more minutes into it. I think I'll add some more lights down in here. Kind of like this. I'm not going to fuss. That I told you I didn't like. I'm not real thrilled with that. So sometimes we'll just do that. Yikes. So I might do a little bit more work on them, but I wasn't happy with it. So that's generally what I'll do at this particular point if I'm not pleased with it. And because uh, I don't want it to dry looking clumsy, I'd rather have it dry looking unfinished. Let's get that light back right there where it belongs. And we'll kind of leave it at this point. I'm going to call it quits for, uh, for a quick one, uh, meaning a 90 minute one. And um, I want you guys all to have fun painting. I, I have fun, even, even when these don't turn out great, I really enjoy uh, the challenge of trying to do it. And uh, it's, it's great for me to be able to uh, try and verbalize what I'm thinking. Uh, you know what, because that helps me, <laughs> believe it or not, it really does help me because I, I, after painting so many years, I do so much based on intuition from experience and Sometimes it's really good to sit and verbalize. And that's why I enjoy the questions. When you guys ask questions about why you're doing this, how do you do this? It's good for me because it's forcing me to go back and understand why I'm doing things as opposed to just doing them because uh, I've done it before and I know how it feels. So anyway, enjoy, have, a, have fun painting. I'm going to uh, take a break right now and I'll wave goodbye with a little paint on my hand, not too bad.